Hello Year 2 children, it's Mr Yardsley. Not at school today, speaking to you from a kitchen. I remembered to bring the book back from school though, so we're going to read a little bit more of the Hodge Hegg in a minute. Hope you're working hard on your learning plans this week, especially the work on VE Day. I'm really looking forward to seeing some of the pictures you can send in for Wednesday to the school email address so as we can show them and share them at our virtual parade and assembly on Thursday afternoon. Keep trying hard guys, I want to see lots and lots of beautiful colour from you. Can you remember where we were up to in the Hodge Hegg? Can you remember why Max was called the Hodge Hegg in the end? That's right started mixing up his words because he'd had a bit of a bang with a bike hadn't he and we're up to chapter four do you suppose he'll be all right said ma anxiously it was dawn and they were about to retire for the day the children were already asleep in a thick bed of fallen leaves i should hope so said pa hodge egg indeed his brains are scrambled max slept the clock round and halfway round again he did not stir till the evening of the following day. The shock had sent him into a kind of short early hibernation. When at last he awoke, his sisters rushed to nuzzle at his nose, the safest nuzzling place for, for hedgehogs. With squeaks of concern, and his parents left their snail hunting and came trotting up. There he is, waking up. How are you feeling, dear? said Ma. Max considered this. His headache was almost gone and he was thinking straight, but his speech, he found, would still not behave properly. I'm a bet bitter, thanks, he said. You had a nasty knock, said Pa. You need rest, said Ma. Why not get back into bed? We'll bring you some nice slugs. I don't want to bed into get, said Max. I feel quite wake a wide. In fact, I feel like walking for a go. Pa took a moment to work this one out. Then he said firmly, you're not going anywhere, son. Do you hear me? You stay home in the garden for a while. Get your strength back, understand? Yes, Pa, said Max. I'll say what you do. And he did do what Pa had said for a week or more. Peeny, Pansy and Petunia fussed over their brother. They brought him the fattest, slimiest slugs they could find and encouraged him to play their favourite game, hide and seek. However, this didn't work. When they hid, Max forgot to go and look for them. And when it was his turn, he forgot to go and hide. So busy was he thinking about the business of road crossing. There they are, playing hide and seek and forgetting. The girls would count to 30 with their eyes shut. But when they opened them, Max would still be sitting there thinking. Striped bits were no good. He didn't intend try, trying that again. But maybe, he thought, there were other ways. His determination to find out was increased when Pa came back early one morning from a visit to the park with more bad news. Max overheard him telling Ma. Another one gone, Pa said. Not a relation, said Ma fearfully. No, said Pa. Chap from num 9A, just up the road. I didn't know him well, you understand, but he always seemed a decent sort of hog. He was crossing just in front of me, not ten minutes ago. Misjudged it. Motorbike got him. Leaves a wife and six kids. That evening, Max waited until he was sure that Pa was out of the way, in the garden of number 5B. The people in 5A always put out bread and milk for Max's family, but the people in 5B often provided something much better for their hedgehogs, tinned dog food. Every evening, Pa crept through the dividing hedge to see if he could nick a saucer full of munchy meat before his neighbour woke up from the day's sleep. Ma, said Max, I'm walking for a go. Ma was quick at translating by now. Did Pa say you could go, she said. No, said Max, but he couldn't say I didn't. And before Ma could do anything, he trotted off along the garden path. Oh, Max, called Ma, are you sure you'll be all right? Yes, of course, said Max. I'll be quite KO. Once outside the garden gate, he turned left and set off up the road, in the opposite direction to his previous effort. By now he was used to the noise and the brightness and confident that he was safe from traffic as long as he did not step down into the road. 
he is walking along on the pavement. When a human passed, he stood still. The creature did not notice you, he found, if you did not move. He trotted on past the garden of number 9A with its window and six, widow and six kids until the row of houses ended and a high factory wall began. So high that he'd not have been able to read the notice on it beside the factory entrance. Max speed, 5 mph, it said. Max kept going, a good deal more slowly than this. And then suddenly, once again, he saw not far ahead what he was seeking. Again, there were people crossing the street. This time, they did not go in ones and twos at random, but waited all together and then, at some signal, he supposed, crossed at the same time. Max drew nearer until he could hear at intervals a high, rapid beep, 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 beep noise, at the sound of which the traffic stopped and the people walked over safely. Creeping closer still, tight up against the wall, he finally reached the crossing place, and now he could see this new magic method. A bunch of humans stood and watched, just above their heads, a picture of a little red man standing quite still. The people stood quite still. Then suddenly the little red man disappeared, and underneath him there was a picture of a little green man, walking, swinging his arms. The people walked, swinging their arms, while the high, rapid, beep, 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 beep noise warned the traffic not to move. Max sat and watched for quite a long time, fascinated by the red man and the green man. He rather wished they could have been a red hedgehog and a green hedgehog, but that was not really important. As long as the hedgehog could cross here safely, that was all he had to prove, and the sooner, the better. There they are crossing. He edged forward until he was just behind the waiting humans and watched tensely for the little green man to walk. Chapter 5 what Max had not bargained for when the bunch of people moved off at the peep peep peeping of the little green man was that another bunch would be coming towards him from the other side of the street. So that when he was about halfway across, hurrying along at the heel of one crowd, he was suddenly confronted by another. He dodged about in a forest of legs in greater danger of being stepped on. No one seemed to notice his small shape and indeed, he was kicked over by a large foot and rolled backwards. Picking himself up, he looked across and found to his horror that the green man was gone and the red man had reappeared. Frantically, Max ran on as the traffic began to move and reached the far side, inches in front of a great wheel that almost brushed his backside. There he is, curled into a ball, booted the other way. The shock of so narrow an escape made him roll up and for some time he lay in the gutter whilst above his head the human stepped onto or off the pavement and the noisy green man and the silent red man lit up in turn. After a while there seemed to be fewer people about and Max uncurled and climbed over the curb. He turned right and set off in the direction of home. How to recross the street was something he had not yet worked out but in its experience neither striped bits nor red and green men were the answer. As usual, he kept close to the wall at the inner edge of the pavement, a wall that presently gave place to iron railings. These were wide enough apart for even the largest hedgehog to pass between. Max slipped through. In the light of a full moon, he could see before him a wide stretch of grass and he ran across it until the noise and stink of the traffic were left behind. Am I were, said Max, looking round him. His nose told him of the scent of the flowers in the ornamental garden. His eyes told him of a strange shaped building, the bandstand, and his ears told him of the sound of splashing water as the fountain spouted endlessly in the lily pond. Of course, this was the place that Pa had told them about. This was the park. Hip, hip, roo, hey, cried Max to the moon and away he ran. For the next few hours he trotted busily around the park, shoving his snout into everything. Like most children, he was not only nosy, but noisy too. And at the sound of his coming, the mice scuttled under the bandstand, the snakes slid away through the ornamental gardens, and the frogs plopped into the safe depth of the lily pond. Max caught nothing. And there's the park. Can you see the ornamental garden and the bandstand and the lily pond? At last, he began to feel rather tired and to think how nice it would be to go home to bed. But which way was home? Max, 
considered this and came to the unhappy conclusion that he was lost. Just then he saw, not far away, a hedgehog crossing the path. A large hedgehog. A par-sized hedgehog. What luck! Pa had crossed the street to find him. He ran forward, but when he reached the animal, he found it was a complete stranger. Oh, said Max, I peg your pardon. I thought you were a different hodgehog. The stranger looked curiously at him. Are you feeling all right? He said. Yes, thanks, said Max. Trouble is, I go to want a home, but I won't know the day. You mean you don't know the way? Yes. Well, where do you live? asked the strange hedgehog. There's a hedgehog stranger. Number five, eh? Indeed. Well now, listen carefully, young fellow. Go up this path, it will take you to the back back to the street, and a little way along, and you'll see a strange sort of house that humans use. It's a tall house, just big enough for one human to stand up in, and it has windows and three sides and a bright and it's bright red. If you cross there, you'll fetch up right by your own front gate. Okay? There he is. Talking to the other hedgehog. K.O. said Max, and thanks. As soon as he was through the park railings, he saw the tall red house. He trotted up close to it. It was lit up, and sure enough, there was a human inside it. He was holding something to his ear, and Max could see that his lips were moving. How odd, thought Max, moving very close now. He's standing in there talking to himself. At that instant, the man put down the receiver and pushed open the door to the telephone booth. A door designed to clear the pavement by about an inch. The perfect height for giving an inquisitive young hedgehog, for the second time in his short life, a tremendous bang on the head. Poor old Max. He did get banged up a bit. So we're up to chapter six. I think... We may well be finishing this book off soon, year two. We might well have a think about what we read next then. Year two, hope you enjoyed the story. Keep working hard and we'll see you soon. Uh, don't remember our school motto, if you see someone without a smile, give them one of yours. Keep smiling, everyone.